Let's see if I can get you interested in Ted. First, Ted is one of Warren Buffett's two investment managers at Berkshire Hathaway. He's Warren Buffett's pick to become Berkshire Hathaway's future chief investment officer along with Todd Combs after Buffett's retirement. Ted Weschler is the same guy who turned $70,000 in his Roth IRA into $264 million. He has a track record of paying Buffett millions of dollars to have a four-hour lunch with him for charity twice. Ted is also one of the two people responsible for why almost half of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio was made up of Apple stock. Buffett sings Ted's praises regularly. Everyone fully believes Ted will keep the culture at Berkshire and they have no problems with his future appointment as co-CIO. So how did a Warren Buffett fanboy start working for Buffett and how did he make the tech-hating Buffett who still gets his news through physical newspapers buy so much Apple stock? And does Ted deserve his job at Berkshire Hathaway? Before he joined Berkshire Hathaway, Ted Weschler worked as a head fund manager. After he graduated from the Wharton School of Business, Ted went to work for W.R. Grace & Co, which was a chemical conglomerate. Joseph Peter Grace Jr. was larger than life. During his reign at the company, W.R. Grace & Co owned the largest oil drilling fleet in the country, had the world's largest cattle ranch and the world's largest coca bean company. The company, under Grace's leadership, had businesses ranging from jewelry, fertilizer companies, 900 chain restaurants, and also processed rare earth materials for the US nuclear arms program, President Reagan called to ask for J. Peter Grace's advice on how the US government could save money. J. Peter Grace ended up helping the President's private sector survey on cost control. He was responsible for the Grace Commission report which included recommendations which, if followed, would have saved $400 billion in three years. Government savings would have risen to $1.9 trillion per year by the year 2000. That is, if the government actually followed it after the report was presented to Congress. J. Peter Grace even became the mayor of New York City once. When he passed away in 1995, he had served at W.R. Grace & Co. for 48 years, making him the longest-serving CEO of a public company. J. Peter Grace was larger than life. To Ted Weschler, J. Peter Grace was a role model, just as the CEO was his boss. After starting as a junior financial analyst at W.R. Grace & Co., Ted went on to become an assistant to J. Peter Grace. He got to see J. Peter Grace, a leader of a Fortune 100 company, Company in action from the front lines. Ted learned a lot from his stint as J. Peter Grace's assistant. Even after Ted left W.R. Grace after six years to work for a private equity firm called Quad C Management, his first workplace remained in his memory. So much so that when Ted Weschler launched his own hedge fund, Peninsula Capital Advisors, above a bookshop, he bought lots of W.R. Grace shares for his hedge fund, even when the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy following its asbestos controversy. Ted bought those W.R. Grace shares because he believed in the value of the company. He believed in W.R. Grace's value since he had experience working there. Even after he shut down Peninsula Capital Advisors, Ted decided to keep a 5.1% stake or 3.7 million shares in W.R. Grace. In 2015, his own personal stake in W.R. Grace rose by $40 million. There is this recurring pattern of Ted Weschler being constantly rewarded by his former company W.R. Grace in direct because of his experience there. One of Ted Weschler's stock picks while he was at Peninsula Capital Advisors was Davita. Ted Weschler's Davita stock pick shows his stock investment strategy. He likes companies that have their value creation engine up and running, where the value creation engine is defined by ROC, profitability times growth. In simple terms, Ted likes companies with a high return on capital and predictable growth, a mindset that's similar to Warren Buffett's. Perhaps that's why he was able to turn his 70 thousand dollar retirement account into a 264 million dollar fortune. No one was supposed to know about Ted's amazing investment success. People found out only because there was some controversy where people were angry at Peter Thiel for making five billion dollars tax-free using his Roth IRA retirement account. ProPublica were digging through tax filings when they managed to find Ted Weschler's stunning investment in his Roth IRA and told everyone. Aside from Ted's private investments, Ted's accomplishments at his hedge fund are nothing to sneeze at either. By the time Ted Weschler closed his Peninsula Capital Advisors Fund in 2011, the $2 billion hedge fund returned an almost 1,200% rise versus a 146% rise in Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway shares in that same 11-year period. So we know Ted has the experience necessary to manage a portfolio. In both 2010 and 2011, Ted Weschler was the highest bidder of Warren Buffett's annual charity event. He bid over $2.6 million 
to have lunch with Buffett. During those four hours with Buffett, he and Buffett bonded by talking about Ted's former boss, J. Peter Grace. Those talks led to Buffett offering a job to Ted. Ted Weschler was so surprised and happy, he closed down his own hedge fund to work for Warren Buffett in 2011. It's what he should have done. He initially rejected Buffett's offer because he had to finish a bankruptcy he was managing, but later changed his mind. After he finished sorting out W.R. Grace's bankruptcy, he went to work for Buffett immediately. Ted Weschler is so far enjoying his time at Berkshire Hathaway. Ted rarely discusses specific ideas with his fellow investment manager at Berkshire, Todd Combs, because Warren Buffett believes committees consistently cause mediocre returns. This is why Warren Buffett gave Ted full discretion over his own investments at Berkshire Hathaway. Being forced to play his own devil's advocate works well with Ted, since he used to use this unconventional strategy in his previous hedge fund. Ted has used his unchecked authority and autonomy to bring Buffett's money to Europe for the first time. He has done corporate takeovers of German companies. One of them includes the dead left Louis Motorcycle Company, which sold for $450 million. He's made wins for Buffett too, by bringing in some of his old stock picks from Peninsula Capital. These were stocks which Warren Buffett would have never picked since he is, or rather was, famously not a fan of tech stocks. Warren Buffett likes businesses where he can predict what they're going to look like in 15 or 20 years, so tech stocks were a no-go for him. Ted brought in DirecTV, which is one of the two publicly traded satellite TV providers that mattered. DirecTV stock price doubled after Berkshire Hathaway purchased it. In addition, DirecTV was acquired by AT&T, giving Berkshire Hathaway $2 billion plus half a billion in cash. 2021, Ted Wesher proved his commitment to value paid off when the Vita Group, the company he made Berkshire buy a third of, gave Berkshire a $2 billion gain when its share price rose. Ted stuck to his love for value stocks, trusting in Davita's position as one of the two top dialysis providers. He ignored all the noise and scaremongering by prominent short sellers like Jim Chanos who said Davita was a scam, so he deserved to win. Buffett is very happy with Ted. In 2013, Buffett praised Ted Weschler for outperforming his stock picks for the year by a lot. And in 2015, he said hiring both of them, referring to Todd and Ted, was one of his best moves. According to Thomas Russell, a managing member of a 11 billion investment advisor which owns $1 billion of Berkshire shares, one of Ted Weschler's distinctive contributions to Berkshire Hathaway is, I believe, his sophisticated capacity to handle restructurings, reorganizations, transactions, mergers and acquisitions, etc. By contrast, other investors only focus on holding on to stocks of well-organized companies. Warren Buffett himself said both Ted and Todd have made Berkshire billions already that we wouldn't otherwise have made. Ted's biggest challenge isn't measuring up to Warren Buffett's past performance, but managing the large war chest of money Warren Buffett has managed to amass for Berkshire over the course of his life. In fact, Ted's biggest achievement was getting Warren Buffett to buy Apple stock. In 2016, David Goldsman, a director of Berkshire Hathaway, forgot his iPhone in a taxi. He was so upset, he told everyone about it, including Ted Weschler. Now, Ted was already a long-time Apple fan, and he was trying to convince Buffett to buy Apple stock. Ted Weschler told Warren Buffett how Goldsman felt like he had lost a piece of his soul after losing his iPhone. Warren Buffett was so shocked that Goldsman, such an old friend of his, well, old in more ways than one, was so in love with an iPhone, considering his age. This made Warren Buffett realize an iPhone's worth. Buffett realized an iPhone wasn't some random tech. It was a modern-day craft macaroni and cheese, referencing how the craft company itself was a good value stock. So Warren Buffett, despite telling everyone tech companies were outside of his competence, chose to look more closely at Apple stock. So that's how Ted Weschler made Warren Buffett buy Apple stock. This was Ted's biggest achievement. Good job, Ted. I don't own any Apple stock and I haven't. And the rest is history. Today, 40% of Berkshire's portfolio is just Apple stock, Berkshire's largest holdings to date. When Buffett officially leaves the company, many believe Ted Weschler will become co-CIO along with Todd Combs. Ted himself is very happy now that he's able to enjoy weekly lunches with the man he admires. By working for Buffett, he gets to, as he puts it, average down my cost and enjoy lunchtime with Buffett without paying for those expensive million-dollar charity dinners. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.